everyone and welcome back to my channel. Being that Easter is around the corner, I'm going to go ahead and share with you guys my recipe for hot cross buns. So what we're going to need to make these hot cross buns today, for the dough we're going to need some all-purpose flour, some raisins, now you could also go ahead and add in cherries or mixed peel, but I prefer to just add the raisins inside. I also have some sugar and you could feel free to use white sugar, brown sugar or organic sugar, just depends on you. I also have an egg, I have some butter. I have some nutmeg and cinnamon, I also have some yeast, and I have some milk to go ahead and mix my dough. You want to make sure that the milk is warmed so this way you can go ahead and activate your yeast. For the cross to go at the top, I have some powdered sugar and I have a few tablespoons of milk just to combine that together. And then this is for that glaze that's going to go over the buns as soon as they come out of the oven. I have some sugar, I have some water, and I have some butter. Now. This is quite a few ingredients, but the process is very simple, so I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. The first step for your hot cross buns is to go ahead and proof your yeast, or bloom your yeast. So what you're going to have to do is take all of that yeast, and you're going to go ahead and mix it into your milk. As I said before, you want to make sure that this milk is warm, so this way the yeast can properly bloom. I'm also going to go in with about a tablespoon of my sugar, and I'm going to go ahead and just mix that in. And you're going to let this mixture sit for about 10-15 to 15 minutes or until you see it start to bubble at the top. That's a good sign that your yeast has developed properly. And then we can go ahead and start making the rest of our bread mixture. My yeast mixture has been sitting here for exactly 15 minutes now. And as you guys can see, there are a lot of little bubbles forming at the top. That's a good sign that your yeast has activated properly. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside again. And I'm going to get all of my dry flour and we're going to go ahead and start mixing the dough. So you could do this in the mixer if you wanted to, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it by hand. You're going to add in all of your cinnamon and your nutmeg. And then I'm also going to go in with all of my sugar. And I'm going to go in with all of my butter. Now, of course, if you're doing this, this in the mixture, you would just go ahead and add all of your ingredients at once and just go ahead and mix. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to work that butter in as well as the sugar. If you're using the brown sugar, you're going to notice that there are clumps in that sugar. You want to go ahead and break them all apart. And hot crust buns, they're usually on the sweet side, so I usually add enough sugar to get that sweet taste. But if you wanted to add less, or if you wanted to add more than I'm adding, you could go ahead and do that also. So once all of this is mixed, you're going to go in with all of that milk mixture. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack in my egg and then I'm going to go ahead and start working it in and I'll come back and show you All what right, it looks everyone. Like. So I've added in my egg, I've added in the milk mixture and I ended up adding all of my raisins. And what you're going to end up with is a pretty sticky dough. As you guys can see, I'm still working in some of that dry flour at the bottom. You're going to end up with a pretty sticky dough and that's exactly what you want. If you mix the dough too hard, then what's going to happen is your hot cross buns are going to be pretty tough in the end. So that's why you want to mix it pretty soft and sticky. If you need to, you can go in with a little sprinkle of dry flour if it's like way too sticky. But I think this is good for me. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to keep kneading it in my bowl for about four to five minutes. And then what I'm going to do is come back and just show you guys the texture of this dough and what it looks like. I finished kneading my dough for about four minutes now. And as you guys can see, the top has gotten nice and smooth from that kneading process. That's exactly what you want. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and cover it with a damp paper towel, and I'm going to let it rest for an hour or until it doubles in size. While my dough for the hot cross buns is rising, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the glaze that's going to go over these buns once they're finished in the oven. So the first step is to go ahead and add in your butter into a little saucepan, and immediately you just want to go in with all of your sugar, and you're going to go in with your water. Basically, you're going to let this melt, and you're going to let it boil on a low heat, a medium low heat, for about five minutes just until it starts to thicken up and I'm going to show you guys what this looks like when that occurs. I've been boiling my glaze here on a medium low heat for exactly seven minutes now and it's gotten nice and thick so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to cover this little pot and I'm going to set it aside until my buns are done baking and then I can go ahead and brush this over them. After about an hour, you're going to notice that your dough has doubled in size and it's very light and airy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and punch it down. And I'm going to go ahead and make them into little balls and I'm going to put them on my baking tray. Now, I've buttered my baking tray very lightly at the bottom just so they don't stick 
even though it's a non-stick pan, sometimes the dough can stick, so I just wanted to put the butter there as an extra precaution. So I'm going to show you guys how to go ahead and roll one of these into a ball. What you're going to do is you're going to take a small portion of the dough, and you're going to go ahead and roll it in your hand as I'm doing here. You want to grab it with the palm of your hand, and you want to put it on your other hand like this, and then roll in. And you want to keep doing that until one side is very nice and smooth. Once it's smooth, you're going to go ahead and pinch all the sides together. And you're just going to bring it all together like this. And I like to make my hot cross buns on the smaller side. I don't like them very big. But honestly, the size depends on your preference. So go ahead and make them as big or as small as you'd like. Once I roll them out like this, I'm going to go ahead and put them on my baking tray. And I'm going to show you guys what they look like before they're ready to go in the oven. I finished portioning out all of my dough and I've gotten the tops nice and smooth. What you're going to do at this point is cover this with another damp paper towel and you're going to let it sit for another 45 minutes to an hour just until they grow a bit also. You do not want to put them in the oven at this stage or else they're going to end up being tough. You have to let them rest for a little longer before you go ahead and pop them in. So I'm going to come back and show you what they look like before I go ahead and stick them in the These oven. are how my buns looked after about another 30 minutes of rising. As you guys can see, they've almost doubled in size again. What I've done at this point is I've gone ahead with a very sharp knife and I've scored the top to make a little cross shape. The reason for this is because you want a nice little crevice to bake into the bread. So this way when you put that white frosting in the middle to make your cross, there's a nice little crevice to go ahead and let that frosting fill into. So I finished scoring the tops of my bread and I'm going to go ahead and stick these into my oven at 300 degrees for about 15 minutes. At that point, I'm going to come back and show you guys what it looks like. My hot cross buns were baking in the oven for exactly 16 minutes. Now, depending on the size that you made your buns, that's going to make your cooking time vary a little bit. So as soon as they come out of the oven and they're nice and warm, you want to go ahead and add on that glaze that we made a little earlier. Just want to go ahead and brush it on. Now, if you did not want to have this glaze on your hot cross buns, you could go ahead and just brush them with some melted butter when they come out of the oven. That'll work just fine as well, but I prefer it with the glaze. So once I finish brushing the glaze on all of my hot cross buns, I'm going to go ahead and let them cool completely before I frost them with that white icing that we're going to make. Remember that white icing is going to make like a cross in the middle. That's sort of like the trademark of these hot cross buns. So I'm going to let these cool completely because if I put the frosting on while they are hot, it will just melt right off. So I'm going to finish frosting these with this glaze and then I'm going to come back and show you guys what they look like when it's time to put the frosting on. After you've gone ahead and glazed your hot cross buns and they're cooling, you want to go ahead and put together that frosting mixture that's going to make the cross on top of the buns. So what I have here in my bowl is my powdered sugar and I'm going to go ahead and add in about a tablespoon of milk at a time and I want to mix that in. You do not want this to be too thin so you do not want to add too much milk in at once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep stirring this until it's smooth and I'm going to come back and show you guys what the final product should look like. I finished mixing my frosting here and as you guys can see it's nice and thick. So what I'm going to do at this point is I've opened up a little Ziploc bag. This is what I'm going to use to pipe my frosting on. So what you're going to want to do is just go ahead and pour in all of that frosting into one side of the Ziploc bag so we can go ahead and start frosting these hot cross buns. I'm going to get all of it out and what you're going to do now is you're going to close the bag and you're just going to wrap it up like this so this way you have like a little cone shape. What you're going to do at this point is you're going to cut a very small hole out of the bottom so you're just going to snip it with your scissors right here and then we're going to go ahead and start frosting these hot cross buns. Once your hot cross buns are cool to the touch it's time to go ahead and start piping them. So what I'm going to do is take my glaze and I'm just going to go over to one side of these buns and go to the next side. Now the glaze is going to drip a little bit and that's perfectly fine. You just want to make sure to control your piping bag that you're using to put on your frosting. So I'm going to continue frosting the rest of these hot cross buns and I'm going to come back and show you guys the final product. Alright guys, my hot cross buns are finally done. The frosting has set on the top and they look beautiful guys. They're so shiny on the outside from that nice glaze that we put on. I just can't wait to dig in. These are going to be perfect with a nice slab of cheese in the middle or you could go ahead and slather it with a thick layer of butter. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to break into one to show you guys how amazing these look on the inside. 
And I just want to show you guys. Look how nice and fluffy that bread is in the middle. It is not dry at all. It's nice and it's moist and it's very fluffy. This is exactly how you want your hot cross buns to turn out. The reason why they're so nice and soft and fluffy on the middle is because we mix that dough to a very sticky texture or a very soft dough. We didn't make it too hard. So I really hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys have a safe Easter holiday and I wish you guys all the best in this holiday season. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. Please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet and go ahead and comment down below and tell me what you guys thought about this recipe or what you guys would like to see next. Once again, thanks for watching everyone.